In this lesson, we'll download one of the frost sample site.xml files and unzip it in preparation for importing the complete site into WordPress. You'll use the WordPress importer to upload the content, assign the content to an existing user, and make sure the images come in too. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to import a complete site when an XML file exists for it. Once you have Frost enabled in your sandbox dashboard, you can go ahead and uh, look for and download the XML file if you haven't already. So if you go to frostwp.com and click sample sites, right up here, you'll come to these three. And right next to the view demo button, is the download XML. And if you look at the URL there, it's gonna download a zip file to your downloads folder, and then you can take and put that in, on your computer somewhere. Now I've saved that uh, to, uh, to my um, uh, Frost folder here on my computer. And uh, you know, on Windows to unzip a file, you would right click and then you could click extract all. On a Mac, you could just double click a zip file and it'll unzip that file. So then inside the folder, you'll see just a small file um, that's an XML file. Uh, it's only 76 kilobytes. And uh, just remember where that is. So when you go back into your sandbox, you can go to tools and import. Now, if you haven't already, you need to go to the plugins page first, and you need to have the WordPress importer plugin activated. This is something that comes with WordPress, but you have to activate it. And, uh, uh, and then you can go back to tools, import. That's going to give you a, a place where you can click run importer right here. So then you'll click choose file, and you can go in, into your computer, uh, go to where you've saved that XML file. For me, it's um, in my Frost folder, XML sample sites, small business. And you would click that and click open. And then you can click upload file and import. When you do that, it'll bring up a, you know, a little assign authors section because Brian Gardner, the founder of Genesis and, um, and of Frost WP, now working for WP Engine, um, is the author on the posts and pages. So you could select yourself and then make sure you click import attachments that checkbox there to download and import the file attachments to bring in the images and stuff. And so you click submit and it'll give you a welcome message. And then if you look in the media library, you will have, you know, several uh, uh, images in there. It looks like it brought in the XML file when I did that. So I'm just going to delete that. That probably won't happen because when you do your import, it deletes the, uh, the XML file afterward. So you'll probably look like this with these images. And, uh, you know, just, just to t have a look and see, even though these images are fairly large, uh, 1080 by 1080, only 106 kilobytes. Um, and, you know, it's recommended that uh, you keep your images as small as possible before you upload them into WordPress. And so let's look at the next one. Remember, this was a full screen, large, large image, 900, 1920 pixels wide, 249K. This is about as large as I'd like to have an image. I like to keep them under 100K if I can. But if I have a full screen hero image, I'd like to resize and compress those images down to below 300K and hopefully below 200K if possible. Here's a uh, very small logo image that's only 5K. It's a PNG file. And you can see by the checker in the background that it's a transparent background. So it could go on many different colors and still work as a logo file and be visible on different colors. Next is the final image, a big large 1920 by 1080, and it's only 169K. Later in the course, we'll talk about different methods for optimizing, resizing, and compressing images for your WordPress website, as well as using plugins to do that automatically. Um, if you, um, if you want to set up something like that, you can have a plugin in WordPress 
resize and compress your images as you bring them in, especially if you're going to have clients uploading images into blog posts or editing the content of their pages. And you want to make sure that their images don't come in in the size of multiple megabytes, which can really eat up your server space, but even worse, load your website a lot slower for the visitor. So make sure you have small compressed images, even if they are large in terms of image size. I'll close that modal window down and uh, let's take a look at the pages that were created now. So there's a number of pages that have been created by importing the content from the sample site XML file. And as, as you can see on my example here, one of the pages start here is labeled with a dash and then it says front page. Let's go and make that change right now in your site. Go to settings and reading, and you'll see that you probably have your latest posts selected by default. What you want to do is collect, uh, select a static page, and then from the drop down, choose the start here page for your home page, and then go down and click save changes. Now, if you go and roll over the site name and right click and open your site in a new tab, you're likely to have something that looks exactly like this. A nice pre-designed layout, including footer and header and content within each of your pages. However, if you roll over the menu items, if you look at the URL at the bottom left as you do that, or if you click through, you'll see that this does not actually point to your current website. It points to the Frost WP sample site because by importing the XML file, it brought in the navigation menus URLs exactly as they were. And uh, this is another interesting part of Frost WP. In the header design, they have a highlighted menu item that you can use, um, which really is a, a great thing to have in a modern website. And so the next thing we'll do is go and just edit uh, the navigation menu at the same time as we took, take a look at the site templates and the template parts that are in use in Frost. Let's get to it.